Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2023 Bowman Baseball Jumbo Edition 8 box pick your team number 24 full case break you know about uh, all card ship except paper vet paper non Bowman first prospects all chrome all Bowman first paper all rookie card paper everything else numbered and whatnot ships autographs obviously big thanks to this group for making it happen on a Thursday Chris Butler, you ended up with Last Spot Mojo with the Reds before we pulled the remaining teams for the filler. And that capstone break, number 31. And let's pop open this and see. Let's pop open this jumbo case. All right, these jumbo boxes, we're looking at three autos per box on average. I've seen some with just one auto a box. I've seen some with four autos a box. Well, let's see what happens. Good luck, everybody. I'm going to pop all these open first. Let's take, while I'm doing all this, let's take a look at some baseball scores. I don't think there was too many, too much baseball going on tonight. NBA Finals Game 1 was tonight. And uh, I think the Nuggets cruised to a double-digit lead. Double-digit win. Baseball-wise, Blue Jays beat the Brewers 3-1. Kevin Gossman striking out 11. Bichette and Chapman had homers. Mets beat the Phillies 4-2. Mark Kana hit another home run. I think second or third day in a row. Max Scherzer was on the bump. And they, uh, they swept the Phillies. All three-game sweep. Padres blew out the Marlins 10-1. Musgrove had a no-hitter into the sixth. Uh, Fernando Tatis had three doubles tonight. Looks like he's he's rounding into form. The uh, Diamondbacks beat the Rockies five to four. Corbin Carroll lifting the Diamondbacks with a two out two run single in the ninth. Wow, there you got a little walk off action there. Red Sox beat the Reds 8-2. Devers breaking the tie in a six-run eighth. Twins beat the Guardians 7-6. Royce Lewis game-tying home run in the eighth. Castro winning it uh, in the ninth, the sack fly. And then the Astros beat the Angels 5-2. Bregman, Abreu, Tucker helping the Astros get back. Win at 5-2. We got Juan Chacon to 75, yellow paper. Is it Edward Julian? He's playing right now. Who's up in the bigs right now? There's Brock Jones, the Brock Lobster. First auto, Rays. That's going to be for Jeremy. On, board, on the board with the second round pick. Edward Julian going to Greg and the uh, Minnesota Twins. 
So all these Bowen firsts will ship, right? That won't ship. Brooks Lee won't ship. Miguel Belize won't ship. Justin Crawford will ship. So if you just wanted a, an example. And obviously all the rookie card paper will ship. And there are some uh, some sort of higher tier rookies that were, or prospects that were pulling a little early, taking care of a little bit early. Justin Crawford, Edward Julian is one of them. We'll see the others. Of Cam Collier is one of them. Reds, Chris Butler. Who else? Who else? Oh, Spencer Jones is another one of those guys. Drew Jones. And there's Alex Ramirez. Yellow Chrome to 75 for the Mets. That'll be for David. got our next auto that's William Lugo 110 out of 150 blue chrome auto Mets David M I think these parallels look pretty cool too. Obviously those inserts ship. This is our first Spencer Jones sighting. Tristan with the Yankees. And once again, Greg with the Twins. These aren't numbered by the way, those that light green lunar parallel. It obviously ships. Riley Green went down with an injury recently. Got should be one more autograph out of here. I'm looking for one more. There it is. It's Jorge Ruiz for the Halos. Some good penmanship there. That's going to go to Paul and the Angels. And that is uh, one of their uh, one of their top prospects. I hope. We're rooting for him. We're rooting for all these guys. We got one more parallel here. It's Blaze Jordan to 150 for the Red Sox. That's going to go to Carl M. And the Bow Sox. All right, box one in the books. We'll do an autograph recap at the end. Next one. What else is happening in baseball? The uh, MLB strict clock oversight frustrating Max Scherzer even in his win. I guess Guardians is Quantrill off to the IL with some inflammation. Yankees activating Stanton, Donaldson, and Canley. Um, uh, my fantasy team is happy that Giancarlo Stanton is back. Gilo, what's going on? He caught us right here in box two of eight of this Bowman Jumbo break. Dodgers Rangers swap minor league pitchers. Slow news day, ladies and gentlemen, when, uh, when Dodgers Rangers swapping minor league pitchers uh, is on the ESPN's MLB 
headline group. The Los Angeles Dodgers acquired right-hander Ricky Venasco from the Rangers for lefty Luis Valdez on Thursday. Right-hander Zach Birdie was also designated for signed by the Dodgers to make room in their 40-man roster. Venasco, a 15th round pick out of Texas in 2017, was designated for signed on Monday. Allowed six runs in two and a third innings for in two games for Double A Frisco after being activated from the injured list. He's three and five with a four six eight ERA between twenty three stars between Frisco and High A Hickory. The nineteen year old Valdez was zero and two with a three one two ERA in eight games for Low A Ranch Cucamonga this season. He was signed by the Dodgers as a minor league free agent out of Mexico in twenty nineteen. Imagine being a GM. I mean, there's some random deals like that. Texas GM calls and like, hey, you know, or maybe you can do something with this guy. You want anything? <laughs> who, who, who do you like for this guy? And we're like, yeah, we got this 19-year-old kid from Mexico that we signed in 2019. He's, he's got potential. Maybe he might do better in your organization. All right, let's do it. Jonathan Mejia for the Cardinals. That's for Carl. Well, has had two days off? I wonder how often that's going to happen this season. Two days off? How often, how often do baseball teams get two days off? I think that's, that probably won't happen many times this year, this season. We got Juan Brito, 65 out of 299. Speckle Auto for the Rocks. David M. with the Rockies. Memorial Day thing? I think they're like, hey, let's give, let's give these guys a federal holiday. <laughs> federal, let's give them a federal holiday. And listen, guys, we're the Royals. We're not going to go. We're not going anywhere. This playoff wise this season. Here's Marcos Cabrera refractor to four ninety nine for the Yankees. That'll be for Tristan. And we got a Jason Curio, thirty seven out of one twenty five Aqua Shimmer. Brother of Jackson Curio, who's in the Brewers organization. Both players, I think Jackson's the allegedly better prospect, but I think Jason Curio is pretty good too. Here's Andres Mesa. That is for the Rangers. That's going to go to Carl, who won the Rangers in the filler. There you go. Yeah, the Royals haven't lost in two days as well, so that's a good thing. Am I so? Am I gonna bet on the Royals tomorrow, Gio? Jason's brother, Jackson Curio. Oh, and there's our first. I think that's our first Drew Jones sighting. All the Drew Joneses will ship. So if I missed a paper Drew Jones or something like that, don't worry. They'll still get to you, Chris Butler. We can find some parallels, some ink. That'd be even better. So if the Royals are going to be well rested, yeah, maybe I should make a play on the Royals tomorrow. Who do they play tomorrow, Gilo? And we got Brock Jones, the Brock Lobster, 92 out of 250. Rays, Jeremy Loke with the Rays. I wonder if it's, 
Loke? Loke? Loki? Loque? Loq? Jeremy L. with the rays. Oh, wow. Uh, Jeremy, first off, let's just be happy with a hit. Second of all, second of all, <laughs> we're only two boxes in. Play of the whistle. You can, you can lament that not being the player that you wanted when we're around here. <laughs> We've got a long way to go. Oh, hold on to him, Jeremy. What if what if he ends up being the being the stud major leaguer? Charles was GM for a day. GM for a day. For Hatterberg. Oh, you'd make Scott Hatterberg play first base. I think Billy Bean already had that idea. Yeah, you never know, Jeremy. That's why with all this Bowman stuff, I would, uh, you know, even like the ones that aren't highly touted now, just hold on to them, throw them in a drawer. See what happens. There's uh, Taj Bradley for the Rays to 125. Bowman Scouts top 100, number 15 on the top 100. Nice, that's for Jeremy and the Rays. And we got Juan Jacone to 499. That's for Boston and Carl. Like, I don't know how many people were holding on to James Outman Bowman first. Back in the day, might have a shot at, at rookie of the year. And we got Tristan Casas, rookie auto. Nice, thirty two out of one hundred. Atomic Refractor Rookie Auto for Carl M. and the Red Sox. How has he been doing? Last uh, last couple weeks, hitting 204, home run, couple RBIs, 10 hits and about 50 at bats. But he's playing. He's getting playing time. Couple paper bits here. We've got Drew Jones and Edouard Julian. 
Chris Butler with the Diamondbacks, Greg Dash with the Twins. And we got in Ariel Almonte autograph for the Reds. That'll be for Chris Butler. So we got the Casas and the Almonte, two Reds, two Red teams. Is he a big dude? 6'4", 252. Yeah, that's a big dude, right? You could say he's he's a uh, built like a like a house. You could say he's built like a like a casa. Right. Well, yeah. He's just listed at two fifty, right? Christian Yelich to 499. Brewers, Carl. And this, the listed size thing reminds me of something I stumbled upon uh, watching Ben Affleck interviews when he, as he was promoting the movie Air. I think, I think he had some interactions with Michael Jordan in the prep for this movie. Um, but I think he said he was, he was, got paired with him in some sort of charity golf tournament or something like that. There's Juan Brito Greengrass to 99 for the Rockies, David M. So it was something like that. Where, it, and I think he would Ben Affleck and the rest of the golf group. I think it was, was goofing with him a little bit, saying, "Oh, you're not six six or whatever." I think he, I think Jordan's famously listed as six six. Six seven maybe, but I think many people are are like, nah, he's not. <laughs> and I think they were ribbing Jordan about it. And Michael Jordan said, "Oh, fourth autograph, J T. Ginn." I thought I was, I thought I was done with autos. I was going to continue my story, but J T. Ginn has interrupted us. JT Ginn has joined the chat. JT Ginn, where do you go? Your minor league stats. He's a Midland, currently a Midland Rock Hound, which is part of the A's. It's an A's affiliate. So this is going to go to Oakland. Tristan. That's all right, James. You tried. That was a good guess. All right, there was Justin Crawford for the Phillies. That'll go to Chris. Next box. All right, so to finish the story, Ben Affleck. Michael Jordan, they're hanging out. Ben Affleck and some of his group, golfing group maybe, charity event, was goofing on Jordan. You're not 6'6". I like your list, not 6'7". You're like 6'4", man. And Jordan replies, yeah, well, 
if I was 6'4", this make, makes what I did all the more impressive, doesn't it, MFers? And they were like, they kind of fell silent. They were like, yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. <laughs> I think there was a photo recently of Michael Jordan standing next to, I think he was at an F1 race maybe? And he was standing next to Lewis Hamilton and a couple other celebrities or something like that. I'm like, man, Jordan looks, although he was in the back. He was standing in the back, so there might be some forced perspective making him look just a little bit taller than, uh, than Lewis Hamilton. But every once in a while, that, that, does, that does crop up. Michael Jordan actually shorter than he than he was. All right. Next one. Another three autos, here we go. And we'll do an auto recap at the end, of course. There's Averson Arteaga to 499. Giants, that'll be Jeremy and the Giants. Gilo enjoyed watching Jordan on the Wizards, scoring 40 points at 40. Mostly without shooting threes, yeah. Yeah, he's he's pretty good. Ooh, and a plate auto. Wow, nice. That's Hayden Younger. On plate autograph for the Bluebirds. Carl with the Blue Jays. Nice, Carl. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Yeah, Jordan at an early age worked on that his shooting game a lot. I think in the early years, I think a lot of people just thought, oh, he's just... He's just a guy that's going to drive to the basket or he's just, just, just dunks, you know, something like that. But he really worked on that mid-range game and then just became unstoppable. It's Christian Yelich, pink. 175. I mean, imagine if, imagine if Giannis Antetokounmpo develops, you know, a mid-range game or a three-point game. This Christian Serta to 150, Blue Shimmer, Chris Butler. I mean, that would just be ridiculous. Giannis would be unstoppable he'd be like he would rattle off multiple MVPs in a row I would think like uh, like Jokic yeah I think I think the you know it is a less physical game today You know, as long as Steph Curry takes care of himself, he'll probably last for a decent amount of time, longer than he would have if he was, you know, if he was born in the 80s. 
late 70s. There's Carlos Jorge to 4.99. That is for uh, Chris Butler and the Red Legs. Last spot mojo. Another Edward Julian for Greg. Some Spencer Jones. Holiday, Jackson Holiday, 48 out of 50. Gold Shimmer on card autograph for Aaron Billingsley and the Baltimore Orioles. Not his first. I think he was in Bowman Draft, right? Uh, that's where his firsts were, but very nice. Matt Holiday's kid, number one overall pick. Real nice. Yeah, still sells. Still sells well. We got one more parallel here. We got Ariel Almonte to 199. And that's for Chris Butler and the Reds. And there's Josh's brother. That was a nice box. The plate, the Carlos Jorge refractor, and Jackson Holiday. That was a personal box. Be pretty nice. All right, folks. Box five. We are halfway through this full case break. How's Jackson Holiday doing? He's he's playing with the Aberdeen Ironbirds. High A ball. Through 156 at bats. Uh, how many games is that? What's 156 divided by four? About 39-ish games. Yeah, he's crushing. He's hitting 372. Six home runs, 37 RBIs, 12 stolen bases. He's got an OPS of 1.128. Think about that. An OPS of over 1,000. 1,100 OPS. Now, it's six, 600 is okay. Right, 600 keeps you a major leaguer. 700-ish, oh, you're an all-star. 800-ish, I mean, nine, that's, that's MVP caliber. I don't think he's gonna be, uh... well, it's still high A, Chilo. But I think he should be moving on to 
Moving on to single A. Or no, he's already in single A. So he's played, let, let's give you the splits here. He's played 14 games in single A. He got promoted already. Still raking. 396, two home runs in 14 games, 16 RBIs, 14 more walks than strikeouts, 14 walks and 13 strikeouts, three stolen bases, six doubles in 14 games, and a triple. Wait, no, he went from A to high A. Oh, still raking, 359 in high A <laughs> through 29 games. Listen, long story short, he's pretty good. Maybe maybe double A if he keeps doing this. Oh, you got to give him a cup of coffee at the end of the season, right? Just give him a little taste of the bigs. Is Jackson Curio to 250. And another Brock Jones speckle this time to 299. Jeremy with the raise. You don't think they're going to rush him? I guess he's he's only 19 or so, right? Maybe they you don't probably don't have to. Yeah, well, not with the intention of playing. Not with the intention of playing, more with the intention of, of just kind of absorbing, you know, sort of absorbing Major League Baseball, how these ball players work, how they are. I mean, I guess he knows all, maybe he doesn't need that because his dad was a big leaguer, but... There was a story I read recently about Will Smith, um, the Dodgers catcher, how even before, I want to say he was still in the minors. I mean, he was a couple years away from even being considered to maybe battle for a starting job. But they had him just, he wasn't even on the roster. They just had him travel with the Dodgers for a little, a little bit. I think maybe after the minor league season was over. Maybe there's like a month or so there. There's Emmanuel Bonilla to 75. But, uh, but like he was able to just kind of absorb how the other Dodgers catchers were prepping for games, just working with pitching staffs, all that sort of stuff. It was really good. Yeah, I'm sure his dad did prep him about life in the majors, but I don't know about you. My dad's told me a lot of things about life <laughs> that I haven't paid attention to. Didn't realize he was right until I was much older. So I think, I think sometimes it's good to to have a, to have some players just get a taste of just of just that big league not not even lifestyle just how how the, how big leaguers work you know you might think you're a hot shot prospect but then you you don't quite realize just how hard these guys work to maintain all that
<laughs> right, yeah, I didn't pay attention. Now, now look at me. Opening baseball cards and talking about how I could have been a big leaguer. As Logan all hopped to 399, had a good start to the season before injuries. Is that another Jackson Holiday? It is. Another Jackson Holiday for Aaron and the Orioles. Yeah, they do that in spring, but spring only gives you so much. That's why, that's why Jeremy, they give guys cups of coffee towards the end of the season. You know, having, having, them, having them up there for for a week or so at the end of September, it's not gonna mess with the clock that much. They'll just add that week back in <laughs> the year he's supposed to get called up and delay that another week. They'll, they're masters at clock manipulation. I'd like because that's because like I'm saying I don't I don't think I don't think service time is you can't just be strictly beholden to service time. Sometimes there's a, there's some benefit in giving young players you know, a taste of big league life, even if it is someone with pedigree like Jackson Holiday. Yeah, Baltimore is loaded in their farm system, which makes me wonder. You think if Baltimore is within striking distance of a playoff spot, you think they're making moves? Baltimore is in second place, four games behind the Rays. I'm sure they're well at 35 wins. I'm sure they're well within a wild card spot, right? They are. Do they become sellers? You can't play the entire farm system and not all the farm system is going to work out. Maybe you got to make some hard decisions with the young kids. Trade some of those guys in the middle of the season. Get some bona fide talent there. At what point do you at what point do you hang on to can't hang on to everybody and everyone can't play? We know that. There's Gunnar Henderson, we we're just talking about him. Yeah. What if he's not looking good? There's Samuel Munoz. Or he's looking okay. But it's clear that what if he's like a little ways away. What if they what if they get Otani? That would be crazy. That would be a headline that would just blow my mind. If <laughs> you're the Orioles who would you have to trade? There's another Carlos Jorge. Refractor to 499 for the Reds. Chris Butler. He'd have to move Colton Kowser. Probably Jackson Holiday. They won't because the Royals will get Otani. What will it take for the Royals to get Otani in a trade? 
Orals aren't getting Otani and free agency. That would be another shot. That would be even more shocking than the Orioles. Yeah, every case of Bowman with 24 autos in here, you are going to get duplicates in, in here more often than not. Although, I think I've probably seen more duplicates here than usual. Two Jackson Holidays, two Brock Joneses. Actually, that, or three Brock Joneses, actually. Two Jackson Holidays, two Carlos Jorge's. No, obviously we're joking, Jeremy. There's no way Otani goes to goes to Kansas City. And Gilo, as a as a diehard Royals fan, as much as he hopes, he knows that Otani's not going there. Even if they give him all of the Royals minor league affiliates. Would that even be allowed? Is there is there there has to be some sort of uh, some sort of rule in Major League Baseball, do you think? There's Jace Young, but they're but minor league teams are only affiliates, right? They're not owned and operated by. They're not owned and operated by the uh, by the big club. There's Jace Young, nice blue autograph for the Tigers. That'll be for David M. If Mahomes can do that, they better give him like 51% of the Royals. They give they better give him majority share of the team if Mahomes can do the unthinkable, bring Otani to Kansas City and have him sign a contract longer than 5 years. You make him the you make him the mayor right on the spot. He already bought us, brought us Whataburger. Anything is possible. I think I think Otani is worth more than that Whataburger franchise. Oh no! Here's here's another Midwesterner, Rex, Cubs fan, Rex. Where where's where's Otani gonna go, Rex? Jeremy, I know I, I know you're new here. But you're gonna you're gonna have to deal with these regulars and their their wild ideas, their overinflated sense of what they think their clubs can bring. I'm pretty sure Otani wants to go to at minimum a regular World Series contender. Not even just maybe if we have a good season we can make the wild card. No, he doesn't want those teams. He's already on that team. There's Samil De La Rosa for Carl and the Cardinals. Are you a Braves guy, Jeremy? The well, Braves are doing all right. I, I... Otani's just one man. Or I guess two men. I think he can pitch and hit, I guess. All right, two boxes to go. We're getting there. We're almost there, folks. Stay on target.
I think the Mariners could be a wild card in the Otani sweepstakes. Everyone's saying Dodgers. As a Dodger fan, I certainly wouldn't mind that. The Dodgers have the money to do it. You know, they've... They've got certainly have the need for Otani. They're perennial World Series contenders. You don't think Jeremy doesn't think so because of Ichiro's legacy in Seattle. There can be only one Japanese star for each team, Jeremy. What what if it what if it turns out? that Ichiro and Otani went to rival high schools. There would be nothing more that Otani would like. High school baseball in Japan, massive. And what if Otani was like, there would be nothing more I would love than to really stick it to, to, to Ichiro. To really stick it to Ichiro Suzuki, who's on, who is on my high school's rival, my rivals in high school. F those guys. F Ichiro. I don't know if they went to rival high schools. But it'd be funny if they did. Turns out, <laughs> turns out Otani and Hideo Nomo are like best friends. And he's like, I do not want to tarnish that relationship. I respect Hideo Nomo's legacy in Los Angeles way too much. That would be a plot twist. No one's who, who's looking into that. That's the kind of reporting I want to see from major sports media outlets. That's Jason Dominguez to 125. That's for the Yankees. Spencer Jones is for the Yankees. Maybe I have to look into that. Yeah, Dodgers are certainly the logical landing spot, but if the Angels trade him, oh, if they trade him, he can go anywhere. That's true, Rex. Not by his choice. Nice Justin Crawford autograph. Carl's kid. Carl Crawford's son. Going to the Phillies, going to Chris Butler. There you go, Chris. Right. That'd be the cubsiest thing that they would do, Rex. Dump their farm system, get Shohei Otani for three months, just for him, just to have him leave in free agency, leaving the Cubs with a depleted farm system. Starting from scratch. <laughs> hey, you're welcome, Chris. Thanks for grabbing the Phillies. Although, in, in reality, I, I really don't think... <laughs> yeah, that's what, that is what you said, Gilo, but, but with the Cubs, I, that, like, I, I'd be like, I could actually see them doing that. <laughs> with the Royal, I don't think they do that. But I don't think, in reality, I don't think, I don't think Artie Moreno and the Angels, I don't think they want to move. I don't think they want to trade Otani because then they'd be the ones that they'd be. They don't want their legacy to be. We're the ones that traded Otani. The GM forgot who the GM is. The GM still Perry Manessian, or is it someone else? Yeah, I've brought up that question before. I, I, I think if you sign Otani to a 10-year deal, you just have to have a handshake acknowledgement that, listen, 
later on, you know, if it turns out you got to pick one, we're going to have to have that conversation. Just know that, that you're going to have to pick, pick a pitcher or uh, you have to pick the pitching side of things or the hitting side of things just to preserve your career. Here is Damon Keith, Blue Lunar to 150 for the boys in blue. My Dodgers, Travis with the Dodgers. Yeah, I'm sure they don't have plans to move, to move Otani. And even if they did, Rex, they wouldn't say that they had plans to move Otani. But I don't think they can. I mean, they, they can't have the legacy, you know. They don't have the legacy. to. They don't want their legacy to be, I'm the guy that traded modern-day Babe Ruth. They'd rather say, hey, we gave Otani a fair offer in free agency, and he declined it. <laughs> and puts it on Otani. All right, if they took that yeah, to Rendon, imagine if they took that Rendon money, the Pujols money, the Josh Hamilton money, and just gave it to that guy instead. I mean, for most players, Rex, yeah, you got to try to get something back. But you have a generational player like Otani who also happens to be quite popular. Do you want your reputation, your reg legacy for the rest of your working life to be you're the guy that traded Otani? Be like... It'd be like the guy who traded, uh, well, I don't know the guy it's, you know, it'd be like the Red Sox who traded Babe Ruth. It'll always be, it'll always be uh, talked about in that sense. It'll be in history forever. Maybe they don't want that. There's Nikau Poku Grego. That is for Chris Butler and the Phillies. Pick that up straight up. There's Framie De Leon to 125. Trout, Trout made his bed though. <laughs> there he is. He made his bed with this team. He didn't have to. Trout's going to request a trade to Philadelphia in, when his golf course opens up, Jeremy. I don't know when that golf course is opening. 2026? Absolutely, Jeremy. Remember, the, the, he's got that golf course opening. Um, the Tiger Woods Design Golf Course opening. Uh, who knows when? Got to get the Eagles games a little bit more easily. Imagine he could play he could play a day game at, at Citizens Bank, right? And then walk across the parking lot. I mean he's not walking across the parking lot, just hops on a golf cart and goes right to the football game. The Sunday night football game. It could be that easy. Especially with games being shorter these days. He could he could play a one o'clock game on a Sunday. That game would be done by 3.30 after post-game stuff, press stuff, dinner, you know, post-game meal. It's like 5 o'clock. I just pop right over the game, football game, hang out, with, hang out with the Eagles players before the game. 
right? That's what on the East Coast. That's probably a five a Sunday night football. It's a five thirty, five thirty start. No, eight thirty starts. Five thirty for us, and in, in LA, he'd love it. Trout would love it. Last box, ladies and gentlemen. Last box. I think we have another case of this. I have to check. And if we do, I, this picker team kind of took a while to fill. We maybe we'll reconfigure it. That's Edwin Arroyo for the Reds for Chris. There's a uh, Roderick Arias, purple Ray Wave to 250. That's going to go to the Yankees. That'll be for Tristan. Should we do a full case random team? Maybe. Does that move the needle for anybody? Cam Collier, nice. 114 out of 499 rookie, or not rookie, Bowman first autograph. For Chris Butler and the Red Legs. Stick with, P stick with Pick Your Team. I feel like the high end teams do get snapped up. It's just those middle end teams that we're having a little trouble moving. I guess I don't, I mean, I guess I could do a thing where. Do the thing where we do a pick your team and then, you know, put the put like the next 20, 15 to twenty teams in a in a team random, make it a random team. Maybe that formula works. You don't mind waiting? I appreciate that. New release day. We were, we were doing multiple cases of these a day for about a week. And then after everybody kind of burned out on it, then, and it just depends. In subsequent weeks, we've had some cases sell within a night. Sometimes that case just kind of sits there for a little bit, but it just all depends on, on if, we get some, if we get some Bowman people. Hey, here's Matt Mervis, 74 out of 150. A little color match there. Blue chrome for the Cubbies. Paul with the Cubs. How's he doing? I think he got called up recently. Hmm. Not so hot. Last seven games, batting 111, couple hits, a home run, three RBIs, four walks, six strikeouts. But he's, I'm sure they'll give him a, a, a decent leash. The Drew Super Bounty was out, so that's tied down. Yeah, it was, it's not like there's no more Drew Joneses to chase. Plenty of Drew Jones is Trey. That's just one card. Oh, a nice card. That's still just one card. Plenty of other Drew Joneses to look for in here. There's 62 out of 299. Frederick Ben Cosme. Speckle for Aaron and the O's. Is that, is that what everyone wanted? I don't have that data, Jeremy. You pulled everybody and they said, 
That's it. I feel like the same people who buy, the same small group people that buy the Diamondbacks are still buying the Diamondbacks in our picker teams. It's not like everyone was able to afford the Diamondbacks anyway. Especially since we were doing picker teams. I disagree with that logic, Jeremy. At least for, at least for, our, for our side of things. I guess maybe on a broad side of things. There's Shea Whitcomb, our third and final auto of the box, third and, uh, what, in our 24th auto of the break. Let's see if we can find any. There's still out there, still other autographs out there. That'll still go for a lot. Sure, everyone wanted that bounty, but not everyone was, at least on jazbeescaserace.com. I don't think we've, have we even done a random case? Maybe on new release day, I think we did a random case. Anyway. Yeah, who was, we were talking about that, Jeremy. Who would actually do the one million? I mean, what kind of guarantees would you get? Who was doing it again? Was it David David Adams? Blog? David Adams? Here's your recap. Like that plate. It's a pretty solid break, actually, overall, if you kind of look at it from a top-down view. Some pretty nice stuff. Let's give away that wax party invite. All right, so let's flip back to this list here. Let's gather the names 1 through 30. Yeah, kind of from a top-down view when you do the recap, it was a nice case, wasn't it? I think it was pretty solid. Now, what makes this break even more solid, Jeremy and everybody else? You have a chance at a wax party invite, a chance to win some nice, some nice wax. So, oh, that was from a different dice roll. That's from a different die? I didn't clear out those dice. All right, new dice. New list. Name on top after seven. There's the timestamp right there. Name on top after seven. We'll get an invite to the wax party. Good luck, everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six, and fingers crossed, seventh and final time. Name on, top, name on top gets the invite to the wax party. Ah, Ryan. Very close, but no cigar, not this time. But everybody, there are many wax party invites still remaining, plenty of them. So keep trying. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. All right. Top name after seven is Chris Parent. I was busy calling Chris Butler's name a lot during this break. I don't think we got a Chris Parent call shout out here. What team do you have, Chris? I don't even know what team you have. Padres. I mean, there's all, all card ships, so I'm sure you'll get something, but in, I don't think there are any Padres autographs. So Chris Parent, you're in the wax party. Fingers crossed when, when, whenever we eventually do that randomizer, hopefully you'll get something nice for not getting anything for the Padres. There you go, man. Congrats to you. Thanks, everybody, for watching and for breaking with me. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.